All right, guys, let's get into this next segment right here. Uh, this is a video by Glitch Poachers. It's called How Anisia and Hila, Hila, Hila Klein Tarnished Critique Poisoning the Well. I don't know what, exactly what that means, but I'm curious about it. Um, let's let's get this party started. I mean, I showed up, you know, 2016, and now here we are, and Ian is doing different stuff. Like, Ian, as a person, has not changed. I think I was different, for sure. Very much in, like, regards to his, like, moral stance on a lot of things. But, like, Ian and how he feels about how he wants to put himself on the internet has changed. Mm -hmm. But I think that was going to happen no matter what. That's I get that. I get that. Like it change, it's weird because like I talk about that too on like TikTok. I, I I've always been the same. I've always been pretty progressive. It's just that like I've done less dunking on SJWs because people were getting the idea that like I was like a bigoted. And I didn't want to represent myself like that. You know what I'm saying, dude? Get the blue brand arm stand. Okay, maybe I will. Um, so I can understand wanting to like not. You know, be, when you get older, you get a little more sensitive, dude. Sometimes, and you're just like, okay, I don't want to be mean to other people, kind of a thing. At least in my experience, I guess most old people just get less sensitive, huh? But <laughs> he always says mm -hmm. that had to happen. happen. You dunked on Keemstar, uh, Rice Gum. Like Dunk. obviously, these are apolitical people, but they're still like very heavily slanted to the right. Outside of your your free speech, absolute. Did he just say Rice Gum is slanted? Always says mm -hmm. that had to happen. happen. You dunked on Keemstar, uh, Rice Gum. Like. That's racist, dude. I can't believe you're progressive racism right now. <laughs> Your free speech absolutist position. It, it didn't seem like you were, you know, any different than any other content creator on YouTube. He said, usually I'm the puppet master in these situations. That's how he views himself? I dub the yeah, puppet I guess, master? I guess so, man. Those yeah. videos, like you said, no, they were yeah. a hit piece. And when you look back at it, you cringe. Yeah, it. absolutely. But, I mean, it was... I kind of get that. <clears throat> I kind of get what they're saying with the, the hit piece thing. Um... I don't, things if, that I don't know if it's necessarily hit pieces, but I can understand why they might. I think they were talking about the one one of the girls who they felt he felt kind of bad about it afterwards because he criticized her. Uh, and he was felt like he was kind of mean. So I get that. <clears throat> I can understand that. I just because I, I watched the full video of them talking. I was like, OK, I kind of understood where they were coming from with some of the stuff that they were talking about. Um, thank you so much for the five dollars from Mia. Sparkling heart. Super Sparkling $4 heart. And thank cents. you so much. Oh, my goodness. You guys are too generous today. OK, save some of your money. All right. A lot of people love really it's not it. something that could have been sustainable even if you wanted to look if you didn't change you couldn't you just be you became star right yeah yo congratulations idubs this was a great event shout out to anisa your wife creator clash uh is a is a w for sure thank you guys i uh, yeah a lot of people's um uh i guess criticism is like oh like that witch or that yeah you know, um uh, well a lot changed of, him or a lot of people, things have, have gotten oh, bad since they've gone yeah. together type thing a lot of people attack anisa fine we'll get your girlfriend on here there have been Shit. so many changes to what a youtuber can and can't say the thing about buzzfeed's approach to feminism is like they're like the mcdonald's of <laughs> feminism like there's yeah. nothing yeah. genuine left here i don't think anyone makes no. as much content as us that's for sure they mcdonaldification like important big topics and do this easy to consume you guys talk about yeah. all the mm. topics things i haven't even heard of dude mcdonaldification <laughs> Quote me on that. I don't think anyone makes no. as much content as us. That's for sure. It's basically. Hey, 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 hey. I feel like I make more content than them. Okay. I try to stream daily with that. Li like, let's average a three segments a day. We got our live stream, three video uploads. I've been trying to get shorts in there. That's three more shorts. I feel like I've been doing more. <clears throat> what do they do? A one or three, three hour live streams a week? <clears throat> I'm doing like six. All right. Get wrecked, liberal. Like a slow. Brainwashing. As we've aged, we've realized that, uh, you know, you want to conduct yourself differently. God, I hope that man's life is ruined. Oh, is this the whole... Is it all just clips? Or do they do, like, do they talk in here at some point? For this. I'm so glad we actually found it. I thought we were in, like, an intro. His identity. You guys are they didn't find his identity. They got it wrong. The video is not meant to be a hit piece. I didn't okay. set out to Wait do Wait a minute. That. You posted a Next content cop would be the last one ever made. Some of you might be... Wait, is there actually... Wait. Because it is... Uh, Ian's girlfriend. Oh, that was just a very long... It's like a four-bit intro. A thank you so much for the membership, uh, the small god. Thank you. Ah, uh, shut up! And when, like... Identity. You guys are they didn't find his identity. I think they it's got a very it long intro. The video is not meant to be a hit piece. I didn't set out to do that. To be fair, like, the only Stand. stuff, like, really was a huge wake-up call to both of us, like, emotionally what happens when, like, the internet kind of collectively shits on you. I know there's a lot of love. We have a great audience, and I love them. Um, but there's, you know, those bad apples in the bunch. Honestly, just so over these people. Shut the f 
up. Shut up. Oh, shit, dude. Dan's this is a fucking entertaining show. Up Shut the up. So, so disappointing. That's debatable, Dan. An entertaining show? <laughs> this is entertainment here, obviously. Someone said, Grow up. What's Jesus. going on, brother? Right. I didn't have the best impression of Mike until he came on your podcast. Yeah, a lot of people And then that. I was like, Mike who? Okay. Redemption arc? Well, I'll let you in on a secret. Don't oh, tell anybody okay. who said this, right. but we figured out how to receive so much money uh -huh. on Hollywood and the internet. Like, we're just running with it. I know it, dude. Until the f***ing wheels fall off. Hey, dude. He was dad of what, what, I, what I did. He's like a hard school. Old what, school is what really made it... He's like, you married this f***ing clown? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now... That makes sense, though, because um, I wonder if it's like the money... Like, it's like weird to do that on the internet. Like, my... my People don't understand what I do, like in my family life and stuff. That like when they ask how, like how I'm doing financially, it's like, oh, okay, well then they're, you know what I mean? Like it's more of like that. Like I thought I'd be the same way if my fucking kid did something weird, like I don't know, maybe like fucking caterpillar shit art or something. I would probably be like, mm, what is this? Uh, but if they're like, oh, we're doing well financially, I was like, okay, well, whatever, as long as that's happening, you know. Lovely. I'll tell you what. Proud. Money helps people understand right now yeah. we're like successful so it's like we can afford I'm proud of you yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that. oh i forgot i wanted to try to do something so on wednesday we made this episode called nalka tax ela which con cringe though yeah and then it ended up number five on gaming <laughs> trending. trending so yeah. i'm like let's put some gaming bullshit in the title every time for a gag and see if we get trending every time <laughs> what a stupid gag like okay because I, I he's not really doing it as a gag it's more of a like oh let me just put gaming in the title to be dishonest um about my representation of the video as a joke that's not really a joke and the only reason i'm like kind of going in on that one is because like uh you're not i believe when you put up uh when you put up tags on your videos and stuff they tell you not to do be inaccurate on your representation or you're going to get in a little bit in trubbies and i feel like you know it's like well, what the frick bro what the frick dude that seems a little Suspicious, like a character from Among Us. Okay. We figured out how to receive so much money uh -huh. on Hollywood and the internet. Money helps people understand. It's true. I, I know what they're saying, what he's trying to say, that like they're doing everything for money. And maybe that's true. But in this specific instance um, of like getting people to understand a bizarre career path because you're making money, like that's very normal. Like that's how my mother is as well. That's how like, you know, my family is. It's how my 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 mother, my my grandmother-in-law, I guess, where I was talking to her yesterday. Like she's like, you know, as long as you can take care of my fucking granddaughter, basically kind of shit. As long as you can take care of yourself, as long as you can take it. Like <laughs> it makes them understand. You know what I mean? Because that's what it's about. At the end of the day, is making enough money to take care of like your family and, and all that other stuff. MTV as a network went from this. We won the court case. Yes. Ah. This life's too short to exercise. I'm just gonna be honest. From this. What's this? <laughs> that was a fun, that was a funny joke though. It's funny because life is shorter if you don't exercise. Um, that was a silly joke. You know what I mean? I understand that a lot of people don't eat them, but like, this life's too short to exercise. I would say exercise. Make sure you do. It's good for you. Uh, Wendler five through one. Look at that if you're interested in weightlifting and you're not, and you're very new, um, or you know five by five strong looks. But it's still a kind of like a silly, funny joke. This little that's little horsey. I already have one of these. I don't want to share my musical taste with you because it is not going to, I'm not going to get anything out of it. You used to be dope. You used to be the edgy uncle that we would turn on at night that our parents hated. It's undeniable that Ooh, both iDubes and H3 Productions have had monumental impacts right, on the- Let's see, we're four and a half minutes in and we just got to talking. That was a long intro. It was really well done. It's just a long intro. <laughs> the YouTube landscape. <clears throat> However, the state of their reputation seems to be rockier than ever. Ethan Ooh. is drawn towards controversy like a magnet. And That's these are true. often fights that he has no reason to be picking. That's be true. Honest, I, like, I get a little brazy. That's a really good criticism because like, even if you're somebody who's like, oh, I think what Ethan's doing is fine. He's just constantly inserting himself. It seems like he's trying to like hate farm a little bit sometimes. And I think that's more disappointing than a lot of other things. It's like, why do you feel the need to to like be so antagonistic and constantly like put yourself in a position where like and especially since like the position is like he feels it almost seems like he's trying to be a martyr like oh let me go see if i can get myself banned on twitter let me go see if i can get myself another uh, weak community strike for making another bomb joke like why but it's i don't I, listen this might be reaching super hard so just like keep that in mind but it just feels like what are you trying to recapture like the mar like the days where like you were falsely sued and you won that case like may, i don't know i'm just saying it feels weird that could just be me like reaching really hard but doesn't it seem bizarre that he's constantly like doing this shit it's like come on man just chill the fuck out a little bit i personally don't get it because i hate even controversy that like i'm right about i hate being in the the forefront like, even with the deaf noodle shit like i i fucking hate it's just it's frustrating in, like a real world <clears throat> like is this supposed to be a job not my life 
And like, I don't want to take that stress home. I mean, I know I work from home, but you get my point. When I don't have a strike, you can let your hair down and say stuff like Ben Shapiro should be the first. Idubs, on the other hand, is so bad at dealing with controversy that he hasn't posted a video in like half a year. Not to mention, he failed to address the controversy from nine months ago in any kind of meaningful way. I got five front row tickets. Um, with the Sam, I understand the Sam Hyde one. I do understand the Sam Hyde one a little bit because, like, here's the thing. I think I don't. I don't know why I Dubs was there. If I Dubs was there to troll Sam Hyde, then like I understand why Sam acted that way. But it seemed like he was there to do a documentary, and Sam Hyde trolled a little bit, which is his content. <clears throat> and I Dubs was like, okay, this guy's a little bit crazy, and so he didn't want him at the event. I understand that. Like, he they this is a first like creator clash. It seems like they're trying to make it successful, so they didn't invite the guy. And I understand it. Like, you know, you want that to go out, go off without a hitch. Is that what it's called? Um, I think that's where more of the motivation came from more than anything else. And to not explicitly address it, like, I think he pretty much did. He was like, yeah, it was like a little bit of a, a risk because, you know, he's a, he can be an edgy guy and they wanted to go right. That's what I remember from. Um, Pristine automobile detailing super shattered $1.99. Why the channel change? Potential viewer change? Uh, not a potential viewer change. Pretty much all my viewers are here from the main channel. It's more of like a potential um it's more about being able to like get new a new audience cuz I had I didn't nobody really like I had a lot of people who had were empty followers and I feel like that probably was like a little detrimental to me. I wanted to rebuild with like the new way that I'm I'm doing my content. $10,000 and it's for charity and $10, supposedly $10. I'm going to be refunded this money. So I guess he he wants me not around badly enough that it's worth taking away ten thousand dollars from charity so in the middle of working on this project i see idubs post his first video in over five months i watched it and i gotta say that was probably the safest video idubs could have possibly have uploaded it came mm -hmm. off as more of a business decision i didn't watch it but it, it, from what i saw some clips on tiktok it seemed like a little wholesome fun thing so decision than a creative decision more on that later mm -hmm. i talk about I the controversy it, surrounding say, the documentary maybe he just maybe he didn't want to be controversial you know what i mean maybe that's all it is it comes down to made getting away with it in an earlier video at the beginning of that video i made this note while some people are pointing the finger at anisa ian's girlfriend i think it's important to keep the responsibility on ian that's, nobody is for that's fair even if like if, if you want to do the criticism thing because at the end of the day he's his own person with his like own autonomy that yeah, own autonomy so you should be criticizing him um, instead of just like blaming everything on her, <clears throat> him to be with anybody. While I'm glad I took the time to focus solely on Idubs in that video, at this point, after making plenty of content on Idubs and H3 Productions, it's clear to me that Anissa and Dila have had at least some level of influence on not only their husband's content but yeah, the course. YouTube landscape as a whole. It's well, yeah, for sure, man. Like, I mean, a, I think a good husband will take what he ha what his wife has to say into account when they do stuff and like you know all criticisms from ethan you can criticize ethan and neil as much as you want but i will say they seem like a very strong family unit and he probably respects her position and then they talk about stuff now you can disagree with her with the way that she gives him advice or but it seems like they make family or group decisions except for when ethan keeps getting told not to make an incredibly edgy joke that could take him down for another week and you know risk the jobs of all the people that he hires uh, and she's like, don't do that, you know? <clears throat> Important to note that I'm not focusing on these two simply because they're women. They just happen to be in very similar positions. Okay. Uh, I also take ownership for the Tana. The, the Tana thing mm. was uh, was my oh, that was so long ago. Was my idea. Was my mm. stupid sure. idea. Yeah. I was the one he that suggested, was... like, we can go to the <laughs> place. It's just I, in San Francisco. I'm like, it is just in San Francisco. Yeah, that drive and everything. And now I think back to it, I'm like, I can't believe we literally harassed an 18-year-old child uh, at her yeah. show. It's funny that Anissa talks about this now as if it were a stupid idea. First of all, it shows that she wants to take credit for the idea while also apologizing for her behavior. Second... Well, I don't know if it shows that she wants to like explicitly be like, guys, I did that. It seems more like she's just acknowledging or they're both acknowledging that like it was like her idea and she put them up to it. And now they kind of regret it because they feel like they harassed like a, a kid. I was like, OK, that's fair. I don't think it's malicious. Um, it's, I just or maybe you didn't mean it like that, but that's how it kind of felt that you meant it. So maybe I'm just wrong about my interpretation. But second of all, and more importantly, when did her and Idubs go from this was an awesome piece of content we made to that was terribly embarrassing? They certainly oh, they got older, and then they felt like maybe they, you know, they were too hard on somebody who made a mistake on the internet. I think that's that's what I that's what I think is what they 
That's what I think. Didn't feel guilty about it at Tana's show, and most importantly, they didn't feel guilty about it during the weeks after when Tana was melting down and they were taking the time to edit the content cop. Yeah. Exaggerator, a story time Pokemon, also known as the physical. Well, yeah, that's what happens when it's like a mistake. Like they feel like they regretted that way that they handled it. Like looking back on it, that's what. I no, but. Embodiment of hypocrisy. It was only until the social climate changed and they went onto the H3 podcast that they admit, oh yeah, we actually regret doing that. Also, was the was that girl Tana Mongo the one that said the N word? Because I feel like I don't. I understand what you're saying. Like sometimes people will change their perspective just as a virtue signal, but it's also possible that they just got older. And like I don't think that anybody really was criticizing the IDubs too much on that video because like they he was kind of dunking on a girl who said the N word. So I don't think the progressive community would have been like, oh my god, within context. Um, they, they I think they just got older. You know, that's it. As IDubs notes, this is the only content cop that he has done on a female. This time, I'm gonna make a video about a woman. And it was the first content cop made with Anissa's involvement. I wonder if Anissa had a reason to lash out against other female creators at that time. <laughs> I mean, it's possible. <laughs> I, but I don't know. Um, you were supposed to come and hang out with me and Celestia. After you begged Celestia, I have the Skype screenshots. You begged her to come hang out with me. I didn't know her or you, but she pulled you a favor time. so that you could come hang out with us. You back out because iDubs tells you it's a bad idea to associate with me. Then you proceed to go on for the next couple of weeks and tweet about me every now and then, talking crap. Talking I don't know if you're trying crap. to provoke me or if you just honestly believe all the things you're saying because if you tried to promote provoke me you did it congratulations it worked mm. however you listen to idub's advice over the bond of friendship that you have in celestia and eventually regretted that because just a week later you posted a parody video of the scarce video you were supposed to be in if you had not all i this is so above my head uh, what how many what there's like eight different what's going on here what the f I, I guess i just I'm, i wasn't it, i wasn't there in the moment eduardo um, pedrero super chatted two dollars Hi, PG. Um, Will you view Swan's second Deaf Noodle vid? I don't know, bro. I'm kind of just over Deaf Noodles. I feel like it's I'm I'm personally bored of the topic, so I don't I don't know, my man. <laughs> um, um, that's just how I feel. Not been a flake. Now you know there's no problems there, but then you start coming at me about how I don't change my bras or something like that's even what? relevant. <laughs> why don't we talk about something that's uh, completely irrelevant to you? How about we talk about why your boyfriend won't promote? anything about you because he's one of the biggest youtubers and he can't help your ass out i think you picked the wrong side you should have come oh, and hung man. out and facilitated making friends but instead you decided to be a snake i'm not sure exactly when this was made and posted but i know that it was before the tana mongo content cop and i know mongo. that it was still on anisa's mind leading into that content cop i know this because less than two weeks before tana's show anisa made a video calling out zoe <laughs> Well, I guess Idubs um, took that girl's advice. It's like, why hasn't he been trying to promote you? And then she, he took her advice as to do the... Like, he, he valued her perspective, I guess, fundamentally. is the point I'm making here. But I'm not sure if the criticism stands. I don't know. Thinking out loud. Women are extremely marketable. It's impossible to say for with sure if the of Zoe had anything to do with the creation of the Tana content cop, Sorry. but that's probably the most likely explanation. Would Idubs have even thought of making a content cop on a woman if he never started dating Anissa? Probably not. And even though content cop had a huge following and a lot of promise, the next content cop would be the last one ever made. Some of you might be pleasantly surprised with who this video is actually about. Oh, me. Oh, wait, no, never mind. I think I'm breaking up with Ian. Yeah, as soon as the content cop thing was coming close, he just switched gears and it wasn't even like I existed. It's a power thing. Either okay. way, I'm pretty sure it's over. Yeah, I just don't like how I'm being treated and I should have stopped it a long time ago. I think right. it's his YouTube ego. If you're wondering what I just read, it's Anissa complaining about Ian when he went on a work trip for his YouTube channel. So, listen, um... I know I'm not, I know I'm running a smaller channel now, but I will say like when I was a little bigger, my, my wife and I've had this conversation. I would have, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, okay. So Anissa obviously was a creator, but she wasn't like a creator on the same level as I does. My wife and I have had issues in the past about, it's so hard to communicate about, um, our, our issues with, uh, how the both of us look at content creation. If that makes sense. Um, 
there'll be a situation that happens that might, might seem like a really big deal to me, but she's like, it's not a big deal, and I need to stop stressing. Or the reverse, maybe. Uh, and Well, I guess in that, in that sense, I will be like, no, this is a big deal. You just don't get it because you don't understand my job. And it creates this like really bizarre dynamic sometimes. And it's hard for the other person to relate to that person because like, this is my job, and I'm in like a particular field. And, you know, this isn't her job. And she understands that, um, like, it's just, it's it can be difficult. So I can understand her venting and be like, this might be over. My wife and I have never got to that point. But I can, I get that. I can understand that from a human level. And I can also understand staying with somebody and working through something, right? Eduardo um, Pedrero, <laughs> hey, thank you so much. $2. Okay, have a nice day. Death is dying and you are thriving. Thank you. I appreciate that. Have a good true though true more specifically when he went to film the music video for the rice gum content cop it's important to note when she says i should have stopped this earlier it. and oh. i think it's his youtube ego particularly because like i said this is the last content cop we got the impact of anisa's jealousy of youtube is highlighted further when you realize idubs uploaded i don't know if that's jealousy of youtube man i think that that might just be like a, a relationship struggle you know 23 videos in 2017 and only 10 the next year. Not to mention the average length of his video went down after he stopped doing content cops. The mm -hmm. output of the iDubbbz channel went down drastically after Anissa pinned their relationship woes on YouTube itself. Although he wasn't uploading as frequently, people weren't really complaining around this time. Unfortunately for iDubbbz, his next controversy would be known by the entire YouTube community. Okay. Sussy. What's that? We're getting breaking news. Idubs is a simp. No. So on the pros we have um. Huh. Look at that. So on the cons we have everyone can see what he sees for a few dollars. She kind of removed his pedestal, as I kind of previously mentioned that a bunch of people on Twitter were complaining about. That now like a response to a content call could just be like, okay, uh, simp. So people were naturally curious, what is Idubs? Well, like, yeah, man, listen, I, I probably, the, the sphere was a little different back then. I, listen, it's fine if your partner does, like, OnlyFans. You know, I could understand the perspective of, like, oh, that's not something that, like, other people should be seeing because, like, that's mine, right? I totally get that. But at the end of the day, I feel like people are probably just dunking on it for, like, an easy, oh, you're a simp, you're dumb now. I feel like for him, I see, the thing is, I can understand the, the, the dislike of Ethan Klein a lot more because I just had seen instances where, like, I personally can dislike him in different ways or some of the content he does i i don't want to dislike him i you know, try to separate the content from the content creator <clears throat> i know it sounds weird but but i feel like i just kind of got older people trying to dunk on him they called him like a simp and shit and it was like you know ah you fucking <laughs> you freaking simp you know what i mean um i feel like some some people were just kind of you know i feel like it is a little bit of an easy dunk for people sometimes think about this very supportive she responds i need to hear this from the man himself i don't believe it unless it comes out of ian's mouth the internet is a forever archive so there's no uh i uh, regret delete all button that's not quite there and then future jobs they might be a little bit harder to come by please both possible but i mean in they're in a unique situation where like that doesn't really have any negative impact on them they're making good amount of money you know what i mean they probably would never have to worry about that um so had a store on for those of you who are unaware of the drama i recently brought upon myself I'll fill you in. To be fair, it was his girlfriend that brought upon the drama. Ian, yeah, you didn't do anything. It's not It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Oh, and finally on pros, I can, um, you can add extra money as well, which, I mean, I don't know if it's really needed in that household, considering the dude will pull like 3 million views off of reviewing peanuts, but, um, okay. Why are people calling you a simp? <laughs> I mean, I... Come on, dude. Just like buy some real estate. Have her manage the properties, dude. Come on, man. The only somewhat rack. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, <laughs> it's a good point, but I guess she just maybe she just wanted to do it to make herself feel better. Maybe for like self confidence boost. I don't really know. I guess that's a good criticism. She didn't have to do that, but if they're both fine with it, like whatever, man. Additional reason I could think that Anissa would start selling pictures of herself like this is for attention. And she certainly did a great job of making her own mistake her husband's problem. I mean, like for attention, I'm just, I feel like, I just feel like the framing is so weird. That'd be like if I said the only reason this guy made this video is for attention. Like part of that's true. The only reason I make these videos is just for attention. Like we want to be successful in some capacity and we operate in, in ways that make ourselves feel better money wise. Like this guy wants to be a big creator. And so far the video is very well done. I just don't necessarily agree with the perspective. <laughs> um, but. I feel like it's my, uh, my, there probably is a, maybe there's a money motivation, but there's probably a motivation that she, he, she wants to feel good about herself. And I feel like that's not like a bad thing to want that type of, that want like affirming attention. You know what I mean? I don't think it's that big of a deal. So, 
you know? Well, <clears throat> there has already been a ton of discussion around this topic. In my okay. opinion, though, the most important piece of information comes from Anissa on an H3 pod. More like the most important piece of simp for nation. <laughs> He's a funny guy. Funny guy. Funny Cast. Guy. To be fair, like, the only Stand. stuff, like, really was a huge wake-up call to both of us, like, emotionally what happens when, like, the internet kind of collectively shits on you. There's a phrase yeah. that a lot of popular streamers have recently adopted. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Believe it or not, yes, your actions do- I, they're, they're streamers. I was gonna say, like, do they, have they never, do they live under a rock? But, like, yeah, that's been said for a long time, okay, I guess. You have consequences, and that's okay. going to reflect on both you and the people closest <laughs> to you, including okay. your husband. Given the fact Anissa was already threatened- Okay, but, like- <laughs> If they had said, like, hey, listen, doing OnlyFans made us realize that, like, we are at a point where, like, our relationship could handle that, that's one, that's a criticism of, like, you know, you play stupid games and win stupid prizes. This is more of, like, people didn't need to be toxic and, like, go around and, like, be fucking obnoxious and call him a simp, but they, like, wanted to, to be, you know, antagonistic. So I don't think that this is really their fault for, in my opinion, the public having the wrong perspective on this situation to break up with Ian over him going on work trips something tells me that Anissa put it's not that I think I, I mean I understand why you may not understand I don't think it's that like small I think it had more to do with like work priorities and how difficult things are and like the work stress is also like a big thing and number focus and there's a lot of the issues that can come with it and they're they, they're he's a huge creator so whatever issue he had between him and his girl were probably much bigger than any issue that I've had between my, myself and my wife again we've never considered breaking up so Majority of the guilt and responsibility for this controversy on Ian, even though she's the one who started all of this. The next controversy Idubs would find himself in would be with Sam Hyde. It doesn't seem like Anissa had anything to do with that project, but I doubt the reputation of Idubs would be this tarnished without the help of Anissa. Part of the problem okay. with why I was going crazy is because I knew that we were garnering a lot of reactionary fans that I hated, and what I didn't. What do you mean reactionary fans? Like a conservative, uh, all right. Racist. Oh. Yeah. Racist. I knew it. I knew it. So, like, okay, I, I can agree with what he's saying, but then at the other hand, I don't like the way that he said it. <clears throat> Let me try to explain, right? What he's talking about is something that, like, I understand from my, my days of TikTok when I had two and a half million followers and I was verified. Have you guys ever heard of that? Where um, <clears throat> I would, I was basically uh, progressive. I've always been progressive. That used to like to dunk on SJWs, which I don't think is an issue at all. The problem is, is that I would get a lot of audience members that didn't understand that my jokes were actually just jokes, and they would they would think that I was bigoted, and they would like grab onto that bigotry, and then I created a, a I had a very conservative audience when I didn't even realize it at one point, and it kind of made me and not even conservative. Let's not say conservative. Let's say uh, I had a more edgy audience of a bigoted audience. Let's not even bring conservative into it. Um, <clears throat> which I think is my criticism of Ethan's uh, perspective, and I felt like it was it was um, the feedback loop was like one the, I would make uh, conservative videos sometimes, and I felt like I was just kind of not conservative. I would make edgier videos or bigoted videos or jokes, and then they, I'd get really good feedback, and it just made me feel like less and less sensitive. And I didn't like that. I didn't like the way that my content was going. So now when I make jokes, I still make the same jokes on my, my stream, but I'm very explicit about how these are just jokes. Because I don't want people to get the wrong idea. So I can understand what he's saying there. I do feel like he's trying to pin the racism on conservatives. Like some conservatives can be racist. Absolutely. Some progressives can be too. Uh, sometimes in different ways. <clears throat> but I feel like part of that motivation, and maybe I'm just being um, bad faith. Part of that motivation feels a more try to distance yourselves from conservatives and try to use conservative as a curse word. Rather than to say like, hey, I didn't like that I, my audience was being was bigoted. Regardless of whether they're you know conservative or progressive. And that's why I didn't like the way that he... Uh, express that you know what's an example of an edgy progressive joke i wouldn't make edgy progressive jokes i don't know what you mean by that um i would just make edgy jokes but i was progressive i just enjoyed dunking on sjw's because i'm fucking fucking based i'm fucking based i like that Brittany became hey thank you so much Brittany, for the for the sub i appreciate that for the small gut Noah Sampson, I knew that there were people out there using the word reactionary improperly as a derogatory term, as a dog whistling tactic, as a slur. Dog reactionary doesn't tactic, automatically slur. mean alt-right racist, and it doesn't even necessarily mean the person has to be conservative. People on the left are free to criticize progressive ideology, people like Shoe on Head and Destiny. So thank you, Ethan Klein, for not only proving Noah Sampson wrong, but showing that Noah, he's also a gaslighter. Sorry about that. That's been <laughs> Dude, people are fucking 
they're mean about Noah. I don't know. I saw a couple, I watched a video that they reacted to one the other day. It wasn't, it wasn't that bad, you know. But uh, yeah, listen, you know, you, it is what it is. Really want to get this here, but it's not gonna fucking work because I sold the wrong shit. Bugging me like a pebble in my shoe ever since I posted my video on Noah Sampson, and it seemed to go way over his head. All right, moving on to Ethan and Ela. Son of a bitch. Do, do people close to you get it? What's going on? Like, do you know? I mean, family. They they do now. They do it now. Took a while. Ela's dad hated what I what I did. He's like hard school, old well, school. Israeli. What really made it? He's like you married this f-ing clown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Basically worse. Than Basically. That. That's a nice way to put it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what about when he would would face to face? Was it cool to you? Well, well he doesn't speak English, okay. so that's kind of what actually helps sometimes. You know, my dad is very unpleased with everything in life, uh-huh. so it was just another thing. Like, I don't understand Jesus. what you guys are doing, so I'm not approving of that. So, but yeah, my favorite one was he said, <laughs> basically, I'm not going to tell anyone that he's my son-in-law anymore. Yeah. What about now? That's rough. So now, it. loves it. I'll tell you what. Proud. Money helps people understand. Right. So now we're like successful, so it's like we can afford I'm proud of lacrosse you guys bucket hats now. That's right. <laughs> It's just, so, but if we, you know, it's pretty simple. Like, so now that you now made he it, he's it. like, cool. Yeah, he yeah. It. yeah, that makes Ethan sense. Klein net worth twenty million dollars. Again, I, I, I just again, I want to reiterate just so that that's normal for people that do weird jobs sometimes, and then like your parents be like, "This is stupid," and then when you realize that you're doing well, they're like, "Okay, I can respect the decision as long as you take care of my daughter." I, I don't know if there's like a, an undertone of trying to make it seem like he's just a money goblin, and maybe he is. Well, but I. I but I don't think so, honestly. Um, I think that there are other issues. But I think that it's just like a normal thing to, you know, kind of get to that point where you, <clears throat> like, I think it's just normal for your family to want to make sure that you can take care of, like, such and such, you know, as people. Ela Klein net worth $20 million. Teddy Fresh net worth $100 million. H3H3 Productions, a YouTube channel they haven't posted to in over two years. Net worth $14 million. Cool. H3 Podcast Highlights, a clip channel worth almost $2 million. Runs a socialist, anti-capitalist podcast with Hassan Piker. Uses unethical Chinese labor to supply Teddy Fresh with its clothing. Sells the clothes for American-made prices, and when you ask Teddy Fresh where the clothing is sourced from, they say, all over the world. Well, all over the world means... Interesting. I guess that gets into a conversation. Yeah, I mean, that's fu- I mean, it is pretty fucked. You'd think that they would maybe want to make him American or something or try to get an agreement for the factory workers to get paid better or something. I don't know. Do they make them? Do they outsource them? No. I thought that they had American factories. That's what I, that's what I had thought. Am I wrong? Maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't know how I could verify this, but I could have swore... That I remember during COVID, they had a bunch of factory workers and they, or maybe that was just like the shipping and receiving. When they say unethical Chinese labor, they mean like the labor is like, they don't, people, they don't have, they don't get paid very well in China. That's what they're saying. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Do I think that insinuating Ethan is primarily motivated by money rooted in anti-Semitism? No, not necessarily. It can be. Um, but I think sometimes maybe they just think that he likes money. Um, I don't know. You know, it's possible. But we wouldn't be able to know unless that person explicitly said it or, you know, uh, something like that. I don't think it is. But. Oh, so it is. Is it all China? All right. Well, you could, OK, so I don't know. I don't know. But some people are saying that apparently he does outsource a lot to China. Um, okay. I mean, you probably, I, I would say that's not a good move. Why not try to like support American businesses? I don't know. It's kind of seems a little weird to me, but better paid businesses. Okay. 95% China, 5% Pakistan. Ela, did it really take hundreds of millions of dollars to convince your father that your husband is part of the family? No wonder why Ethan and Ela would rather hire a babysitter even though they could take the rest of their lives off to parent their children. But as Ela has- What a weird criticism, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? Now you're just- ah, Bro, come on. I would stay away from that. Stay away from the like, oh, you're a bad parent. You can hate Ethan, but I don't think anybody could like make a reasonable assertion that he's a bad parent. He seems like a decent parent. Um, <clears throat> like I think, and this is something I've learned from Jordan Peterson. Listen, a lot of people will hit the point of success where they don't have to work or they don't need more money, but they'll still continue to try to go up as much as possible. It's just kind of like the human condition for some people to just want to strive for as much as you can, see how much you can get out of life. Um, <clears throat> I don't think that they're bad parents because they want to hire a babysitter to be able to focus on their job. I think that's a little, I think that's a little, I think that's a little bit of a shitty like criticism personally. 
Just stated, her children are just too much of a burden for her. Are you sleeping? Are you? I am sleeping when we have help, luckily, because obviously we're, you know, we're getting a lot of help because we both work. Yeah. So yeah, I, money, and, and I like it that way. Yeah. I, whenever I stay home, by the end of the day, I'm crazy. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. I can't do this full time. Well, there's really only one way to be a part-time parent, and it's divorce and joint custody. But even then... Or, you, you know, it just sounds like she's saying if she stays home the entire day, she just sounds like an ambitious woman. I don't want to stay home all day, but she probably enjoys coming home and taking care of her kid after the fact. Um, <clears throat> What do you mean? What's going on? Who is somebody getting upset about the, the Chinese take? Um... Yeah, like they they underpay people in China like drastically. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty bad. Nobody's being racist. It's pretty intense. They 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 get drastically underpaid. Like there was a huge issue where there's some factories with like safety nets for people that jump off the top of the fucking building. Like I think they some of the Apple products are made in factories like that. It's pretty crazy, man. I would just it's crazy. Why can't Ethan stay home? Maybe they're both just motivated. Maybe both of them just want to strive for more. They don't want to like. Why do? Why should they have to? That's my question. Like, why? How come you think that they should have to stay home and do X, Y, and Z? Like, if they have the money to stay, their kids getting treated well, they have the money to get like a nanny, and they're still. I'm sure they're loving parents. So why do they have to be around the kid twenty four seven? That's just a very disproportionately high um, <clears throat> marker or high standard to hold them to. There's other things to criticize them for, but again, we get into this like idea of like let's criticize them for everything. It's just weird. Then the parents are fully responsible for whatever happens to the children. I have no idea why somebody would willfully have their children raised by other people. There's going to come a point in time when Teddy realizes. I mean, it takes a, it takes a, it takes a, fa a, 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 a village. They say, right? I kind of agree with that. It takes a village to raise a kid. Um. In general, like you're always gonna have real, like I mean, like your grandmother, your grandfather's. When you said your, when you send your kids to school, your teachers, they're helping take care of your kids. I mean, do you have the same criticism for people who go to school? Like I understand that they're learning there, but like it's not a bad thing that they have a nanny or something. I would do it too. Is that his parents <clears throat> would have rather have worked than raise him? You should be able to tolerate your. They're not. He's never gonna have that perspective. He'll probably just learn the value of working <clears throat> more than that. This is a little bit of, this is this this takes a little rough brother own son for more than a day without going crazy whenever I stay home By the end of the day, I'm crazy. I know this is harsh, but I'm it really doesn't sound like she's explicitly saying it's because of her kid She may just be like crazy if she stays home because she's not doing anything or she's not working She feels like she's not doing enough. She's ambitious. That's what it sounds like to me but okay. sick of seeing parents who have all of the resources needed to raise their children decide to not raise their own children Okay. It's because I knew that we were garnering a lot of reactionary fans that I hated. I'm, I'm purging sort of inadvertently a portion of my audience that really wants to see me go for the, the throat, you know? Wow, I didn't realize their own audience was such a burden. Let's see how the new friendly fans interact with the H3 podcast. That's all I'm asking for is just be a little more conscious of it. I are, are, so would you consider yourself a top or a bottom or you don't do that la the labels? And I mean, this is all peace and love and with respect, Ethan. It's none of your business. But you have a preference. Like, I was super respectful. Are you trying to say that this isn't a good guy? Listen, this is one of the things that Ethan made a joke about, like a gay joke about buttholes getting loose and James Charles shitting in diapers. The joke was fine. It was fine. Um, <clears throat> but the issue was that the guy came on and be like, I didn't like the joke. And instead of Ethan be like, I understand where you're coming from, uh, but I disagree. He started like asking him about his sex life. And the guy's like, hey, please don't ask about that. And he kept pushing. Right. And it's like he was harassing the guy. That's the bigger issue there. But like, you're, uh, this guy's very respectful that Ethan's talking to. It's one way or the other. But that's another dangerous assumption, too. Can I guess? Don't. You tell me if it's right, if I guess right. He's such a dick. No. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm not going to get into it, Matt. But I, but we all know which one you you prefer. Oh, my God. As long as you understand where I'm coming from. Then. To be honest, I don't really. Apologies to whatever his name was. Uh, apparently, I was homophobic to him. But uh, whatever. What can you do? People say it was gross and disappointing. Saying you can guess if Matt is a power bottom by his voice is so gross. But I was right. That was the point. Wasn't I? He admitted. Yeah, of course you were right. He might have been right, but it's more about like a, it's like a point of respect. You know what I mean? Like it'd be similar. Like if I asked a girl, like, do you like to ride dick? That's kind of like, are you a power bottom? Do you like to ride dick? What if I just ask a girl if she likes to ride dick? Hey, are you a power bottom, power top, whatever? <clears throat> do you like to ride dick? Like you know what I mean? And all of a sudden we would have an issue with it. So you could argue that there's a little bit of uh, homophobia and a little bit of sexism there too. A little double standard. Right. And honestly, 
just so over these people. Shut oh, the, shut up. the shut fuck up. up. Shut it's up, dude. Entertaining show. Shut the fuck up. Someone says, I don't know what's up. So disappointing. Someone said, grow up. Jesus I, Christ. And Dan. I don't know what's up with Ethan today, yeah, but something's off. Combo. Bad vibes this episode. Shut oh, the up. Man. Unsubscribe. Go away. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do you think it's hard for a straight person to understand how it feels to always have people define you by how you prefer is that a valid criticism? Yeah. No, I'm so fucking frustrated it with is, people. Uh, so wait, the, the, uh, do you think some of y'all are way too fucking sensitive no. for the show? To be Just to be totally honest, like people in this thread who are saying they're grossed out and whatever, I think you're really, I think this with peace and love, you might be too sensitive to watch this show. It is, does get annoying with some of y'all getting offended all the time. Oh, well, it does seem like he went, it's so interesting because it seems like he went a little too far to the left, you know? And then now he's like, damn, he wants to go back a little bit. And then he's going back, uh, and I was just being insensitive, and it's like a little sussy to, he's just like having struggles, you know, finding himself back in the edgy side of the audience. So, you know, uh, you know, I get, I get it, but. The fans definitely weren't the problem there. Maybe they weren't the problem in the first place. The exactly, beginning yeah. of the they podcast probably was were, really yeah. rough. Just yeah, there was a there was a, some growing pains, I guess you could call it, as you sort of <laughs> shed that, the vestiges of that part of your fan base. But, yeah. you know, we got oh. through it. We came out the other side stronger. We call them fallen fans. They're easy to spot. I feel like uh, they got a lot of people um, through like Trisha Paytas somehow. Trisha somehow is a progressive icon. I don't even know how the fuck that happened. She's crazy. But she was like a progressive icon at a certain point. And it was really interesting, I guess you'd say. Uh, and then Ethan kind of like had, was able to get like a bit of a hold on that audience and like get, you know, get some uh, positive affirmations from them. It was interesting. And then, you know, everything kind of spiraled out of control, like spiral the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I missed you. Anyway, that's it. But um, they're easy to spot. <laughs> I missed you. Anyway, that's it. I missed you. Anyway, I missed you. Anyway. It's almost like instead of pointing the finger at the people who made you famous and successful, you should take responsibility and try to fix your own show. For whatever reason, H3 Productions demonizes their old audience while quietly resenting their new audience. The H3 podcast has become more drama heavy than that, drama alert. That actually might be true. That that the whole like uh, demonize the old audience but also resents the new one. This might, that might be a decent criticism. I'll say that. Which is fine. Drama is entertainment, but it only makes Ethan's holier-than-thou nature even Holy more annoying. And you might think, thou. what does that have to do with Ela? Well, when given the opportunity, she'll happily does take some free Hila? shots. She could try to correct the behavior on the H3 podcast, but she probably realizes just how profitable this childish behavior is, and she does seem to enjoy it. Joined a well, I've seen times where like she tries to real uh, wrangle an Ethan when he's about to say some dumb fucking shit that's going to get them in trouble and like you know threaten the. Uh threaten the jobs of all their fucking workers. I don't know why that's not taken into that much consideration, but I feel like it's kind of the truth. I should really put something here. Um, List of ugly guys calling me ugly. Right. Um, take a look in the mirror at your pizza skin. I don't know what's pizza going on skin, there. Dude. I couldn't care less that he thinks that I'm ugly. Yeah, I know that. Um, I, all I can do is well, just Well, that's just her responding to somebody that's, like, calling her ugly, which I think is a fair thing to respond to. Why is this so powerful right now? What the fuck did I do? Oh, my lord. Okay, well, that's based. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just talking to myself about the game. Laugh at you and think that you're sad. Maybe when I was, like, a teenager, this would really, like, get to me. Mm -hmm. You know, a guy calling him ugly. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I, I know myself for it. I've, I've, yeah. <laughs> Such a sweet moment. So beautiful. Eric showed off, yeah, just saying. This is all dedicated to Steve. We're going to make a special Teddy Fresh. Everybody can Great. buy a butt, Steve. Wanting to f*** a dude is fine. No, it's uh, totally you know, fine. You know, the Maybe fact just that... go do it. Go try it. Yeah, go try it. You're saying so much how much you don't find me attractive. And nobody right. could care less. It's just really transparent for them <laughs> to pretend <laughs> that their content has actually changed or matured or grown over the years. It hasn't. Although... Well, I, I just personally don't think that was like a great example, only because I think that she was just kind of... Um, she felt she was being sounded like being disrespected for like her attractivity attractiveness level or whatever and she was getting frustrated about it with how much controversy h3 runs into it's probably pretty convenient to be able to rewrite the past <clears throat> no i'm not gonna get banned guys don't worry i, I look i am an idiot that i'll grant you but <laughs> we had a guys. strike and i'm a good i can be a good boy for three months idiot. and i'll be honest I, was a, I get a little brazy when i don't have a strike because oh you can. You can let your hair down and say stuff like bench beer should be the first. It's interesting because like I've I've generally defended some of these jokes he's made, but it's interest that take is is that I don't like that. 
because like originally I was from the perspective that I thought Ethan was saying was saying some out of pocket stuff. Um, but he didn't maybe he didn't necessarily realize how far he was going. But to say sit there and say like, hey, like I I get like I teeter the line of what can get me canceled because I don't have a particular strike up, so I made you know, I might not be close to getting banned. I don't know. Like that's that push that I just it just rubs me the wrong way a little bit. It rubs me the wrong way a little bit there. You know, it seems very intentioned to be I don't know. Like I just I don't know. Why play that line if you know that it's going to get banned? It just feels weird. I don't know how to work. Maybe I'm just having a dumb... Maybe I'm just being dumb, but uh, it feels like a little bit bizarre to me. Okay. I think I was going to say, I said he should be the first to join me for Hanukkah dinner. That's mm. pretty sweet. That's very nice of you. You're going to make reach potato lockers Across the aisle like that? Yeah, potato lockers. Nice. Here's how it works. Aren't Ethan potatoes? will say something particularly edgy to land himself in hot water. Oh, when he comes back from a suspension caused by a strike, he'll lay off the controversial jokes for a bit. But while he's waiting for the strike to be forgiven by YouTube, he will continually refer to the controversy that got him in trouble in the first place to remind you that he's still funny and edgy. This constant controversy keeps the audience watching with little effort. This controversy enables Teddy Fresh to sell up to a hundred million dollars in merch a year. He might be a little bit right there because it does feel like he's just he's just trying to. To be like he's trying to like hate farm with some of these things man like I, it's disappointing it's just disappointing why do they need this much money? So the Kleins don't have to raise their own children and they can buy the approval of Ela's father. These unaddressed faults and insecurities have all led to the decline of H3 Productions. Hey, are we all just trying to get our father's approval? <laughs> what a sad take. Like, I'm not saying it's untrue, I'm just saying it. What a sad thought, you know? Live from Seattle, it's oh, the hot no. seat with Dax Flame. As I said earlier, in the making of this project, oh, totally. iDubbbz dropped his first video in about six months. I was oh. a little bit worried it would throw a wrench into my plans. Luckily, what? it actually supports some of my arguments, although it is- <laughs> I like that. He's like, yeah, he made a video, and I was kind of worried that the video would make it so that like I would be seen as wrong, but thankfully, he didn't correct himself and become a better content creator. <laughs> I get what he's saying. It's just like funny. He's like, God, I'm so lucky <laughs> I'm so lucky that he didn't decide to, you know, to apologize or whatever he feels that I does needs to do to, to shift his content or whatever. You know, what I mean? it's just funny. The circumstantial. But before we get into his most recent, feels that fast. Oh, that's sad. Rest in peace. I didn't mean like in a negative way, but a lot of people are looking for the attention of their fathers, and the joke more was like that. I don't have one, so video, a brief introduction to Dax Flame, the host of iDubbbz' new show, The Hot Seat. I just said, do you want to go with the dance for me? <laughs> she said, um, I don't know you. I think that was a whole draw of, of, of Dax Flame. Is it real or not? Right. You know, you know, when I think of Dax Flame, it's almost a sense of disruptive, socially awkward content. Oh, did he used to pretend to have like a disability or something or whatever? <clears throat> okay. Well, that's, I'd say a little dated, but like it should happen in the past. I get it. You know, whatever. That's that's his genius, like part of it at least. It really like still to this over a decade later, almost a decade and a half, like he's still pulling that whole like what's real, what's not thing, and you still don't really know. Dax Flame is comparable to Andy Kaufman in that you're not sure if he's playing a character for entertainment okay. or if this is really how awkward he is. Yeah, this basically just like Death Noodles, if you think about it, the genius of Death Noodles. Somebody make a video called that and talk about it. Air of mystery is what draws people to somebody like Dax Flame. However, in the iDubs documentary on Dax Flame, you kind of get to peek behind the curtain a little bit too much. The magic and mysticism behind his character is largely explained, and like a good magic trick, once you know how it's done, it's not as interesting. However, it did make for good content two years ago, but hiring him two years later to play the role of awkward talk show host completes the transformation from unique character to character actor. Here's your host, Dax well, Flame! Whatever. Just a piece. Whatever. Uh, okay. I mean, I don't know. It's like, I feel like that's a, okay. I can understand why it might ruin the mystery for you, but I get it. It's just like a character talk show host, like whatever. Um, okay. Whatever. I have advice. You farm the golden eggs, not the golden goose. I dubs. You really know how to ruin a good thing. Don't you? Not to mention this production Wait, that Dax flames character was essentially sacrificed for is bad. I didn't so buy that. what is uh, Goku's strengths? What does Goku do? I know Darth Maul has the double lightsaber. So Goku is a martial artist who has the ability to draw ki and god energy. When he hits a state okay. called Ultra Instinct, he moves without thinking. He would be an impossible target for Maul to hit. So unless Maul does his thing, 
waits for Goku to pick out of a fight and then takes him from behind, there is no winning. So, it, so the only way Darth Maul would win that fight is with a sneak attack from behind. Yes. This could work as a one-off sketch that lasts maybe one or two minutes long max, but this is 30 minutes long and it's supposed to turn into a series. I would show you more of it, but there's not really any point to. It doesn't. It seems like it did well. Have 750,000 views or whatever. Like, okay, I, mean, I don't. I don't see like a particular issue with what he's doing. What is it from here? Um. <clears throat> So it looks like the first one got a million views. Second one's only got 267,000, which is still solid. Uh, looks like they're doing... Yeah, it just looks like... It looks like he's just trying to do something what? with his channel that he wasn't doing before. It's fine. I don't really care. I feel like it's fine. Okay. It doesn't really get much better, and it doesn't really get much worse. It's just stale and drawn out. Plus, it is a bit interesting that Idubs would choose two out of the three people he did documentaries on to do his first show, the third documentary Why? being on Sam Hyde. I know this is a reach, but is it possible that Idubs chose those two in an attempt to make Sam Hyde feel left out? I don't know. That, I do feel, is a bit of a reach. I think that's a, quite a reach, yeah. I don't think that he did that. That would be next to level IQ play on that one, I guess. I don't think that's it. I think maybe he just liked these people, and he felt like it could give them a career by utilizing his old channel into producing a show. That's what I would say. I feel like, I don't know, for me, I try to keep in mind, I don't. I think that most people don't try to act maliciously. I'm, I try to be, I'm trying to work with that as my core philosophy. And then when somebody does something wrong, I try not to look at the worst thing. I try to look at like, unless you really know them, I try to look at just like, oh, maybe, you know, they're not trying to be a fucking total doo-doo fart knocker. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> um, I guess it's possible, but I feel like that's a pretty big reach. I would say that's too unreasonably petty to be in the realm of possibility, True, but I let's be that. real. Idubs turned down more than $10,000 in charity, so Sam Hyde couldn't come to his boxing event to cheer him on. I don't, I don't expect him to put me in his production if he doesn't like me, but the fact that I was banned from even watching it, that's what really rubs me the wrong well, I mean, like, listen, man, the, the problem is that, like, he came there to troll. Like, we know that, right? We we know that because he was, he, even even though he didn't get in, he still, <laughs> he still sell, like, t-shirts and he was trying to get them on the camera. It was funny, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's just like <laughs> I can see why I Dubs is a little apprehensive. Is you know all I'm trying to say. Wrong way. I mean that's kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. The, thing is, the thing is, man, I was going to root for him. I mean, I did even even watching him even after being banned. It's frustrating to see such promising careers derailed for such silly reasons. It seems like I Dubs is trying to avoid his love of criticism, while H3 is trying to deny his own use of criticism. And while they ultimately have control of themselves. It's clear that their wives have impacted their careers, reputations, and perspectives. To deny this would be to deny their importance in their husbands' lives. While Idubs and H3 are doing fine okay. financially, their reputations are worse than ever. And instead of taking so, yeah. steps to improve their content, they've only taken steps to protect their legacies. Pride comes before the fall. I know I've been extra- I don't know, it just seems like Idubs is just doing different stuff. He's using his channel he doesn't use to, again, push like a little podcast thing with other people that they can benefit financially from. And um, he's not like maintaining the ego perspective of like, I can't put something up on there that may not do well. Let's just put a new thing up there. Even if it only gets 200,000 views on a 7 million channel, I'm still having fun and able to employ people. I, if anything, I'd say that that's like a, a real, like he's, he's going against his ego on that one. I feel, um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Some of it seemed a bit uncharitable, I will say. Um, I don't know extraordinarily critical during this video, but I think it's warranted. Two of the most ruthless critics on YouTube can ruthless. no longer handle criticism to well, the point where they now have to speak out against it. That I don't think that Idubs is a ruthless critic. Ethan is definitely, for sure. I, I'll give you that. He could be a little uh, sussy. But why Idubs? I don't get the Idubs hate. Like, I truly don't, you know what I mean? I, I don't really get the one. Just never sat well with me, especially considering how they continue to treat people. All this talk of a new direction, changing content, and a more mature perspective, just for the sake of laziness, complacency, and some brand deals. I have to hey, ask, listen. though, was it worth it? Hey, work smart, not hard, all right, dude? Don't make a fucking five-minute intro anymore. You gotta make a shorter one, all right? Then you, you know what I'm saying, dude? <laughs> all right, I like the Little Mermaid song, dude. Um, content cop your own girlfriend, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. This video was fine, I felt. I feel like that video was, uh, it was okay. So, like, listen, the video wasn't terrible. It was well done. I'm going to say that. It was very well done. For sure.
I will say that some of the perspectives seemed a little bit like some of the stuff seemed like a little bit of a reach, a little kooky, a little sussy, a little sussy wussy, you know, a little crazy, but um yeah. I want Papa Gut to pee on my face. But just as a friend, there's nothing weird about that. I want him to pee on my face. 